Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to today's video where I share 10 oracle decks and 10 tarot decks that I think um, are the best for beginners. Um, I'm going to show you some decks here that I have that I pulled from my collection. I'm also going to share you the five, my personal five first tarot decks that I've ever used. And so let's get started. Um, so if you're a beginner, okay, you're probably going to have to choose what system you want to work with, which tarot system you want to, you know, learn more about and stuff like that. Now, I would recommend the Rider Waite, uh, Rider Waite Smith system and decks that are Rider Waite or Rider Waite clones um, because... This deck right here is the original Rider Waite. When people think about tarot or talk about tarot, they usually have this deck in mind. This is what it looks like. So this is like considered the OG tarot. There's also the most books or information about this deck. So this is why I would recommend this as a first deck. If you um, resonate with the images, okay? For me personally, the Rider Waite was not, this deck was not my first deck because when I was looking at the images, it was hard for me to, I don't know, be inspired, okay? Just because these images, it doesn't really trigger my intuition that much, you know? And so even though I knew the basic cards, I went with, I'll show you my first first deck ever. I went with something else, you know? But, um, so this is a Rider Waite. I would recommend this for beginners, and another system that you could choose instead, I only have one one of these decks, it's a Thought or Thought, depends how you say it. Um, this to me is, I don't know, like a more masculine deck, a more like, not scientific, but a little bit darker I would say, a little more, it's less intuitive, but there's a lot of information and a lot of symbolism in each card. I mean, tarot in general is you're basically using your intuition and your own knowledge and your reading symbols, right? So, like, here you have the planets and stuff like that. This deck is a little harder, though, for beginners, I would say, personally. But uh, the thought is usually more like pip. So you have, like, let's say this is a six of wands. You're going to have literally six wands. Where in this, it's like you're going to have more of a picture depicted, a scene depicted, like here, for example, this is a four of wands. You have four wands, actually. But you also have, like, the characters in the background, you know. That helps uh, the understanding of the card a little better. So, a lot of people like this one, though. The Thought decks. This is uh, this one right here, the Millennium Thought. Thought, thought, whatever. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> um, this was one of my personal first decks, actually. Um... But this is what was probably like my fourth tarot deck, okay? I did not start off with this one. So this is the other system you can choose. So you have the Rider Waite Smith system, the Thought system. You also have Marseille system. And I believe Marseille tarot is a little older than both of these, but I could be wrong. Now this one I don't recommend for beginners at all. This is very pippish. The colors are a little off-putting in my opinion. And this is more like an ancient um, art style, I would say. I mean, you have different Marseille decks though out there. But anyways, so first off, you want to choose which system resonates the most with you, which is easier. I would recommend Rider Waite Smith and then move on to Thought and then Marseille or whatever, okay? The important here when you choose a tarot deck is that you understand the system, and you love, like, the images, okay, really trigger something in you, okay? So you could look at a card here and words just come to mind naturally, okay? That's your intuition kicking in, okay? That's what you, wanna, that's what you want from a first deck. So I don't recommend the Marseille and I don't recommend the thought to start off right away. But I mean, follow what it is that you like, right? So <clears throat> here we go. So the first one I actually recommend would be the Rider Waite, the original, everybody knows this deck. Um, there's a lot of information out there on this deck, a lot of readings you can do, research online, and things like that. I will also mention that each tarot deck and oracle deck usually comes with a guidebook, and it, the guidebook will go card by card to explain, to have like a little bit of a meaning of each card. So that is always helpful. So the Rider Waite is the first deck I recommend for beginners. Moving on. Also, 
interesting fact, I actually started off with Oracle decks just to get me, you know, in the mood of thinking about divination and things like that. So I actually started off with uh, Oracle deck. But for tarot decks, the next one that I would recommend is the After Tarot. So this is also a Rider Waite Smith. But um, so basically, the After Tarot is like what happens after in these cards, okay? Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but I prefer this one to the other one that I just showed you just because I prefer the images and the art and the colors. But it's very similar to the first one that I showed you. It's like the same standard image, but with a little more. So I prefer this one right here. This is a really good deck for beginners. And you know, with the first deck, guys, take your time. Get to know it, like, inside out, okay? Work with the guidebook. Do some research online to get to know your deck and, and things like that. Like, don't go off and buy, like, 10 tarot decks. You're going to be overwhelmed, and you're never going to really connect with that one deck. Um, speaking of first decks, this was my first deck. Or what is left of it, because <laughs> um, I bought this deck with the intention to write on it. I wanted to write the meanings here, so the upright meaning with the reversal meaning. So I really use this as a study deck. And this is based on the Rider Waite system, but for me it's a little darker, it's a little more, I don't know, like astrological. <laughs> like I like the symbols here, and I like that... Um, Every card here really triggers my intuition really well. The images really depict what the meanings are for me personally. And I would recommend this definitely for a beginner deck. The, the author, the creator actually did... Uh, uh, this is the Gilded Tarot, by the way. The author upgraded the images and now there's a Gilded Royale Tarot. And I think I'm going to purchase that deck to work with. Um, so yeah, this I would highly, highly recommend as well. This is an idea that you can do as well, just writing it directly on the cards. So I knew I wouldn't keep this. This was really just to get, get me to understand tarot, to know tarot, to work with it. I mean, this is a nine of cups and this card for me, this picture depicts the nine of cups to the, the, the T, okay? So you could, I would recommend making a, a little bit of research on, you know, learning tarot online or whatever, and then you can choose a deck. And um, I also, a little trick here is that I always, before buying a deck, I, I usually like to go on YouTube and watch at a flip through because they're going to show you all the cards of the deck. And so you'll know right away if you're going to resonate with it or not. Now, my second tarot deck ever was, you know, I upgraded to the Ethereal Visions. This is a much softer deck. This is really good for beginners, although the guidebook is a little simple. So, you know, always do research. Um, yourself and there's like gold gold details here I really liked it the images really really spoke to me I love how like little like ethereal it is <laughs> I mean that's the name of the deck but the key is really like you look at these images with your basic n knowledge of the cards obviously the suits the cards and then you go off the image you know so this is one deck that I really, really recommend, the Five of Cups. You know, it's really, really good deck, this one. So, oh, the Empress, let's finish with her. <laughs> so Ethereal Villi Village, wow. Ethereal Visions, I highly recommend this deck for beginners. Okay, moving on next, another one of my first decks. After this one, actually, I probably, I think I got the Druid Craft. Let's go here. The Druid Craft Tarot is a, such a good beginner deck. And you guys, you'll see that um, I really tried to pull some decks here that are a little bit different, a little bit of a different style, different mood of decks, just to show you guys what I think are good decks for beginners. Now, the Druid Craft, I did trim these cards because they were so, so big. They had a huge, huge border. I think they had two or three borders, actually. So I did trim it. But this, to me, is a little more of a nature deck, okay? Pagan deck, Celtic deck, whatever you want to call it. Druidcraft, I love this deck. And um, I highly recommend it for the beginners. There is normally, like, the title of the card here, but I personally cut it off. Like, this is a two of cups. You have the, the cups here. And it's different, but I really, really love this deck. This is highly used deck for me. The Four of Pentacles, I mean, look at that. Justice, the Eight of Cups, 
so beautiful this deck i want to buy the another deck like this i have zero decks that i have in double but this one i think since i cut off the borders and whatnot i think i would want to work with it again if i buy it i mean this is the ace of pentacles how freaking beautiful is that the aces in this deck are amazing the moon card so it's a little different than the rider weight but the symbolism is still there you have the pillars you have the moon and you have the howling wolf slash dog with the water typically the rider weight has like a lobster here but so this is like goes off a little bit from rider weight but you still have them there like this is the eight of pentacles the pentacles on this deck are stars so you still have that you know still have the symbolism now this is a strength card it's a little different normally you have a woman with a lion but since this is since this is the uh, druid craft they put a boar so you know the themes could vary a little bit but the symbolism is still there the lovers is quite different though this is my favorite lovers card of all time probably one of them at least i love this lovers card so yeah that is the druid craft really good for beginners if you don't like the rider weight system well not the system but like the the deck highly recommend this one the guidebook is really good as well in this one okay next next is my tiny everyday tarot i love this deck and the guidebook is kind of small let's take a look at it it is a little guidebook but you have like the upright meaning and then the reverse so you can read that this is the four of cups it's pretty good. I mean, I would recommend make, doing research out of, you know, outside of this little deck, this little guidebook. But you all, always get, like, the basic meanings. You know, I'm not going to go back. So you always have the basic meanings. And what I like about this one, this is based on Rider Waite again, but it's so freaking crisp, this deck. I mean, the hermit here, like, I love it. This is really, it's a more simple art style. You only have three colors, but I love it. I mean, I was dragging this deck around with me for years and years and years in my bag. Um, this is a really good deck for beginners, I would say. It, again, if you're into this art, this is a great, great deck. For beginners, the Everyday Tarot, and it's also very small. So if you want something discreet, Highly recommend this one. Okay, moving on. I have three more tarot decks and then we're going to hop into uh, oracle decks for beginners. Next, I have the Crystal Visions Tarot. This is what the back looks like. And uh, this is like more of a fairy tale deck, which I really, really like. This is really good for beginners. The images, for me, the images are, they depict the meaning of the cards really, really well. I mean, this is the five of wands, and then you have, like, two lions as well, so. I mean, this is really nice. <clears throat> if you like the fairy tale world, if you like, like, this kind of art style, I would recommend this deck. So... You know, all these decks that I'm showing, they're all different, you know, but the basic remains the same, okay? So, you're always going to have the major arcana, the 22 cards, which is more like the spiritual journey or the spiritual lessons of life. And then you have, what, 50, 58 cards? The reminder of cards <laughs> in the suits. You have the pentacle suits. You have, the here's the pentacle you have the sword suit, the cups, and the wands. And each suit represents something different. And so, yeah, this is really, really nice. Some decks have extra cards. Like this one is the extra card in this deck. It's the unknown card. Normally, you don't have that in a tarot deck. So this is not a 78 card deck. It's a 79 card deck. But I do recommend this one for beginners as well. I think this is a lot of um, people's first deck. The Druid Craft as well. Um, and then 
the famous Lightseer's Tarot. I do recommend this one for beginners, and it's quite different, but the book in this one is really good. I mean, look at this book. So, you can really rely on this book. Um, this is not your traditional Rider Waite, although the system is based on it, I believe. This is a lot more modern and spiritual deck. So, you don't have all the symbolism of the Rider Waite, I would say, but the energies is there anyways so if you're not into something like more traditional or whatever you could have this as your first deck and just study the guidebook and the images you know um and then do some sort of study outside this deck so you can better understand each card but this is ooh, i love this king of wands <laughs> love it um so yeah this is definitely more like of a modern twist on the rider weight it's actually really different. <laughs> um, this is... A lot of people love this deck. So I think this would be beginner friendly. If you really don't like like the Rider weight, like I said, uh, this is a good alternative. But I always recommend... Um, you know, doing your own research on tarot because the more... Like, each of these decks for me, I have so many... I have the biggest collection of decks... Because each deck, for me, teaches me something different about tarot, okay? It's like, it just makes my knowledge about it so much more deeper. Because every deck is like a different book. You get something different out of it, you know? So that's why I have so many decks. <laughs> so the Light Series is a really good one for beginners, although it's a little different. But um, this is the least non-traditional, I think. That and the Druid Craft here, they're not really traditional. And this one I'm going to talk about is also not traditional, but, um, oh shit. Where are my cards? I have lavender in it. it smells so good. Dry lavender. Um, this is also a really good guidebook. Um, if you're like afraid of, not afraid of some cards, but this is more like a light, the light side, <laughs> a light version of tarot. Um, because in tarot you have a few cards that, um, I mean, obviously tarot is like an esoteric art, it's divination art, so it's not always like fun and games, right? And I'm going to show you some cards that some people, they don't like. Some people are, I guess, afraid of some cards in tarot. Like here we have judgment, it could be a little off-putting. Let's see what else. I'm thinking of the tower of the devil card. Here's the devil, okay? So not everybody is going to want to see a devil in their card deck okay and that's fine for me personally i really don't care i mean the darker it is the better because <laughs> life is not always fun in games let's see what other card the seven and swords the ten of swords you know these are cards that you don't necessarily always want to be getting the three of swords you know heartbreak and pain sorrow the eight of swords this is a ten of swords someone fucking dead you know so this one this is the angel the Guardian Angel Tarot, they kind of, like, their interpretation of each card is a lot more positive. So that's different, you know. Um, but what I like about this deck, this one right here, the Guardian Angel Messages Tarot, it's so good for beginners. Because there's the title here, and then you have three key words. And then you have a really good guidebook as well that has a lot of information. So the knowledge that you gain from studying this deck will be able to, tra you'll be able to transfer this to another deck and then to another deck and to another deck. You know, it's like you're building a pool of, of knowledge here. So yeah, like I was saying, this is a really good because you do have like the wands and stuff. But um, for me, the images in this deck, they're first of all, they're huge. They're really huge. And they definitely did a really good job of showing what each card means, okay? So here is the tower card, and they did rename it to Transformation instead of the tower. And in the Rider Waite Smith, you have the tower that's like crumbling down and people like flying out of it to their death, basically. So, you know, this is a lot more softer. And the keywords, realization, life change, and liberation. So it's a, a little more positive, you know, a little less scary, if you wish. 
So this is a really good deck for beginners, I would say. And honestly, even if like, you could read this intuitively just based off the images because they're so good. I mean, this is totally <laughs> the king of earth, the queen of pentacles, okay? In this deck though, they did rename or they switched the suits, like the water are the cups, the pentacles are earth, air is the swords, and wands is, is uh, fire. So I really highly recommend this deck for beginners as well. I mean, the two of air, this is exactly what the two of air is, right? Plus you have keywords. So this is really, really good for beginners. It's um, a lot more inclusive also of like body types and stuff like that than other decks that I've seen. Um, this is a really good deck. And it's very comforting, you know, it's all these angels, these pure energy. I don't know what it is about this card, but I love his face. Like, he looks so mischievous. I don't even know why. He's, I always feel like he's looking at me like, what you doing? <laughs> so he fait des mauvais coups. Like, I don't know what it is. I, I love this card. Um, so yeah, that is the uh, Guardian Angel messages. And I believe this wraps up my, you know, the 10 tarot decks that I would recommend for beginners. Really good. There's some from... Guys, there's so many decks out there. There's probably like thousands or millions. Okay, maybe not millions, but... So many decks out there. Research what it, what it is that you want. You know, go on Amazon. Look at decks. Look at flip-throughs. I think that's my biggest um, tip. Look at deck flip-throughs on YouTube because they will show you every card and you'll know right away if you're going to resonate with this or not. Um, I'm going to put that there. Okay. So I've just completed the tarot section. Now I'm going to go into oracle decks. And I have 10 oracle decks right here on the side. I started my divination journey with an oracle deck. And it's actually this one. Um, Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray. I wanted something not too intimidating. And what I've noticed for me personally for, with oracle decks, it's like there's different purposes or different categories to each oracle deck. I wanted something for personal guidance, okay? Like guidance from my ancestors, my angels, okay? This is like advice. And then, other than that, there's other decks that would help you more um, with like predictions and actual divination. It's all divination, but it's different types. If you know what I mean, okay, please let me know. <laughs> I hope this makes sense. But then there's other types of decks that are more for prediction, like I said. What is going to happen, you know? Um, daily energies. What's going to happen today? What should I know about my day? What should I know about my relationship? What should I know about, you know, what's going to be the outcome of this, that, or that? Um, so I'm going to show you some decks that are more predictive. I'm going to show you some decks that are, for me personally, I use a lot of decks for personal guidance and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then there's also some decks here that will help you on your personal journey, you know, like on your spiritual journey, on your, um, self-realization journey, you know, your personal growth and things like that. So this is what the book looks like. So each card, basically, you will have the meaning in the book. Really good guidebook. And this was my first ever deck. Ever, ever, ever. So this has a special place in my heart for sure. I love the backs. Look at that. So you do have, like, the title of the card and then a little message plus the guidebook. And I've said this before, but I feel like this deck is, like, worldly, okay? I feel like this deck has traveled the whole world and has been combined with this amazing advice and guidance for me personally. I've cried with this deck. I've laughed with this deck. I mean, this, I've been through everything with this one. And the cardstock is really good. It's still in really good shape. And so I absolutely love this deck. I highly, highly recommend. There's people, there's seasons, there's symbols, there's um, animals, the seasons, I think, if I haven't said that. Like, this is really, really good. So, before buying a deck, figure out what you want from your Oracle deck, you know? Do you want to more do, like, predictive readings, or do you want, like, personal guidance on situations that you might be going through? And then pick a deck. So still, again, with the guidance theme of Oracle decks, but this is, could also be used as predictive, um, like what's the outcome of blah, blah, blah. It's the Sacred Traveler Oracle. This is a really, really good deck. The guidebook is also really good. 
you know, it describes every card. So really good. I don't tend to really use guidebooks. I use guidebooks a little more for Oracle though. Um, this is the back. Gorgeous back. And then what I love about this deck is all the images. Very intuitive if you just read from the images. You have the card here that's going to tell you information. And then the little quote here that I love. And, you know, I've used this deck when I feel lost in my path, when I'm not sure about, like, what the outcome of something would be, what is going on. I use this more for advice. Healing energy flows through you. And then you go in the guidebook and you get the full message, or you just... I My style is more like letting messages come to me, because we're all psychic, guys. We're all in very intuitive. You know, humans are psychic. And it's just a matter of developing the skill. So what I like to do is just kind of sit with the card and look at the image and almost meditate. And let certain, certain things come to mind, certain emotions, certain feelings, certain words, certain thoughts. And that's kind of how I read. And um, it helps me connect with my higher self, you know, because I know people, they, they like to channel spirit, but I like to, to like channel higher selves my higher selves your higher self whatever whoever i'm reading for you know my higher self knows what is best for me and is the best to guide us through this world you know through this life so yeah i feel like when you're channeling someone's higher self it's just a lot more pure a lot more relevant to the whatever's going on and i'm not channeling <laughs> random fucking spirits okay i'm not into that <laughs> I mean, I have nothing against people who do that, but it's just not for me. I feel better doing higher self. Anyways, this is it. There's a little bit of something in here. I love this deck so much. Highly, highly recommend. And the this is the last deck in the like the guidance or advice category for Oracle decks. This is um colette from colette baron reed the spirit animal oracle this has a really really good guidebook a really chunky guidebook and the cards are amazing very good for beginners very easy to read very easy to use the backs are amazing sorry if you guys are like wobbling um so yeah this is a deck of animals really so you have the animal it's actually the animal spirit and then you have the little phrase that goes with the animal and the extended message in the guidebook. But look at these animals. I love the art on this. I used to pull a card every freaking day from this deck for a long time. Just like advice, what should I do, what should I focus on for the day, you know. It helps you put your intention and manifest things that you want. There's countless ways of using Oracle and Tarot cards, you guys. Let me know in the comments, do you use Tarot and Oracle for like guidance, advice, or for more like predictive reasons? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, I love this deck. This is a really cute deck. There's so many cards in this. There's like uh, 68 cards in this one. So there's a, an animal for everything. <laughs> and I love it. Highly recommend this one for beginners. It's really easy. If you love animals, you should get this one. Oops, I lied. This is another one here that's more like for guidance, I would say. Um, but more like for spiritual purposes, okay? Like this is the Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell and Danielle Noel. She also has two other decks that are very, very similar to this. But this was my favorite. I mean, look at the back. Isn't that pretty? This is very spiritual, very soft. Very like soul family type thing. Um... This, this, to me, is more like a personal guidance deck, for sure. I mean, there's the, like, the title of the card with the, the, like, keywords or a little phrase to help you out with the meaning. And then, obviously, the picture is very thought-provoking. So, this is more like a... How about that? So, yeah. This is, like, a more spiritual one, you know? really good it's really good i really like this one it's very like soft and feminine i would say i don't really use this anymore um yeah 
These are not my personal favorites, but uh, these are all decks that I definitely have loved at one point in my tarot oracle journey. <laughs> Okay, moving on next, I want to do, I have three decks here that are more for like personal growth, personal reflection, and things like that. So this is, um, let me show you, <laughs> the Soul's Journey Lesson Cards. Okay, this is really good. The guidebook, the guidebook and all of these are really good. So this is what it kind of looks like. I recommend this deck. If you want to do like introspection, self-reflection, self like personal growth and things like that. So this is what it looks like. You have like this Mandela that I believe if you look at it, it does trigger something in, in your subconscious. So it's going to trigger something about indecision. Okay, it's like tied to this little affirmation here. So I use my intuition in all aspects of life. It's just a little something to make you think, to make you more self-aware, help you set your intentions for the day as well. And I mean, these are beautiful. Look at that. So I do recommend this one, you know. This is a really good deck. Haven't used it much because I have other decks that I prefer, but this is really good for beginners. I know that I'm never alone, you know. So I love the colors also on this one. Ooh, look at that. That's beautiful. I can't always expect the truth from others, but I can expect it from myself. <laughs> so this is just like a little positive affirmations deck type thing that will help you on your personal growth, personal journey. So I recommend this one. On a similar note, we have the Power of Surrender cards. And um, these are amazing cards. This is the back. I mean, I love this back. How beautiful is that? And basically, you have the title here. So these are all like surrender cards. And then you have a little paragraph here. There's no book in this because all the information you need is on the card with the image that matches, you know. So, you know, we have surrender stubbornness to the natural world. Surrender to the idea you can fix someone. <laughs> How relevant is that card? <laughs> and Surrender to Divine Timing. This is so good. I'm going to pull a card for us and see what I'm going to read the little paragraph. But the images are really beautiful on this one. And this is a very empowering deck, if you ask me. You know, this really helps you grow on a soul level, on a personal level. This is really good. Let's see. Grab a little card for us. We have Surrender to Miracles. Be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. Oh, I love that. See how beautiful is that? Highly recommend this. This is straightforward to the point. You just need these cards. You don't need a book. You don't need nothing. You just need yourself and the cards, obviously. And then last in this category of like self-growth, self-improvement, uh, reflection, whatever you want to call this, is the uh, archetype cards by Carolyn Mice or Carolyn Miss. I'm not sure. There's a great guidebook in here as well. And the backs are freaking cool. Hello. That's really nice. And what I like about this, this is really good to get you thinking about archetypes, okay? About, because like I said, tarot and oracle cards are all about archetypes, they're all about sim symbolism and how we interpret, the, interpret those symbols, those archetypes, using our intuition, right? you know? So <clears throat> what I really like about this is that these images in the middle are freaking beautiful. And then let's say... And there's a whole system to use this, like, you can do a whole portrait of your life, of your own personal archetypes. It's in the guidebook, I, I think. But you can also use this as an oracle. So let's say here we have the archetype of the destroyer, okay? So you have the light attribute. Releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life. That is the positive side of someone who would be a destroyer. But then you also have the shadow, the negative side of this archetype. Intoxication with destructive power, destroying others' dreams or potential. 
this gets deep real fucking quick guys <laughs> it's good to use for like we have the vampire you know like those vampire energy vampires and this is really good to get to know yourself to get to know others Let's say you just met someone or whatever and you want to have like a, an idea of what their character is like, what their personality is like. This is really good for that. Um, like new co-workers, new friends, relationships, like loving relationships or whatever. And there's so many cards in here. There's 80 cards, 80 archetypes. And you see you also have like the prostitute archetype. There's always the light and the shadows. So it's never like, oh, this card is just positive. No, no, no. It's like this card is definitely positive and definitely negative as well. We have the martyr, the student, an angel. I mean, you have everything. The hermit. The hermit is a card in tarot. So see, this will help you understand tarot better, you know. That's how I see things anyways. So light uh, seeks solitude to focus intently on inner life, serves personal creativity. But then we have the shadow attribute. Withdraws from society out of fear or negative judgment of others, refusing to help those in need. And then you have the image. So this is packed with information. This is so good. This is an easy deck to use in my opinion. I personally don't use it that much. But I did like my personal chart with this. It was a really cool experience. So that is that for the oracles that are more for like guidance, advice, pers personal. Not guidance and advice. I mean these are <laughs> these are the three decks for personal growth or reflection and things like that now we're gonna end with four decks that are i would use more for predictive reasons and i have this whispers of love this is my one love oracle deck this was one of my first oracle decks but i never really used it that much but it's a good deck for beginners if you're into this art style i would say and in your, if you're interested in love questions, <laughs> obviously. This is the back, and I did trim the edges off because they were huge and I couldn't shuffle it. But this is a beautiful, beautiful deck. But for me, it doesn't really read that well. Like, I don't use it. Like, I don't know. But it's beautiful. So, yeah, this was one of my first deck, and I love it because the images, there's so much information in the images itself, and then you have the title of the card, and then you literally have a little sentence right here. Plus, you do have the guidebook in here, but you don't really need it. And uh, if you like this art style, I highly recommend this if you're a beginner. And it's not just about love, you know, it's very broad, and I do like it. It's not like just like... Mm, surface level this one it's 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 quite deep i would say and uh yeah so if you're into love oracles this could be also very good for like advice and things like that but also predicting the outcome let's say of a relationship or something there's like endless ways that you can use your oracle cards obviously i'm just sharing some of my ideas some of my techniques so yeah that's the whispers of love I am decluttering this deck, actually, because <laughs> I've had it for so long and I never reach out for it. Um, I don't really use love cards, really, for my, me personally. I've been single for so long, by choice, but still. <laughs> okay, then we have the Energy Oracle cards. These are really, really good cards for pre predictive, okay, because this is a very well-rounded Oracle deck. The This is... A chunky guidebook really good guidebook I never used the guidebook actually but um yeah this is a really good deck and it's an older deck I think it was published in like 2010 I think or whatever but still it's a very nice uh, Oracle deck for beginners this is the back and then you have a little bit of everything in here so you have like the keyword you also have numbers if you're into numerology or whatever and so you have the strategy card you have patience this is such a good deck. You also have angels and archangels, if you're into that. It combines, a, like, pretty much everything. I do enjoy this deck. I love the art. And... Yeah, this is a really, really good one. There's the door to personal happiness and personal healing, yin, yin and yang, walking away. This is really good. Community. 
What is this? Ooh. Isn't it this guy hot? <laughs> okay. He reminds me of someone that I know, actually. Um, we have Indecision, Stormy, Storm Warning. Like, there's not just positive cards in here. There's also, like, the darker cards. So, I feel like it's really, really well balanced. There's some cards about career or money, personal happiness, about relationships, about love and romance. This, honestly... I really recommend this one. Obviously, I recommend all these decks for beginners, but uh, this is a good one if you're just learning. And it's beautiful, so... I mean, broken heart. So, yeah, it combines pretty much free, freaking every aspect of life in this one, I feel. So, highly recommend the Energy Oracle cards. And then... Ooh, I just saw that I have another deck here that uh, I'm going to have a bonus Oracle deck. Then we have Moonology. So if you're into astrology, if you're into the moon cycles, things like that, this is really good. This has all the moon cycles combined with all the signs. So this is a very cool, um, this is a very cool deck. A lot of people love this deck. I mean, look at the back. The creator did also come out with like a second deck. I think it's like moonology manifestation or something but i prefer this one so you do have like a key phrase on here and this is the north node so if you know about the north node you could really combine this um you could really combine like i said your knowledge if you do have it of the moon cycles and the guidebook does explain it a little bit in here it's, it's a good guidebook and then combine with let's say the new moon with the sign of libra this is really, really good. Straight to the point, and I love the art on here. I would say that the art is a little less intuitive just because it's just like the background of space. You have the picture of the moon and the sign, uh, the astrology sign. So the images are a little less intuitive, but you know, this right here combined with your knowledge, like I said, of the moon cycles, of the astrology, it's a really, really good deck for beginners. Plus, you have the guidebook, like I said, so. It's a really good way to learn about the moon, learn about astrology, to dip your little foot in there. <laughs> so this is the Moonology cards. A lot of people love this deck. As do I. And oh my god, I love this card. You're very close to achieving your goal. A win-win outcome is forecast. <laughs> this is really good for predictions. This is really accurate, actually. So yeah, that is the Moonology deck. Um, most oracle cards have at least 44 cards, okay? I don't like decks. I mean, for me personally, 44 cards is on the smaller side. I prefer decks that have 50, 60 cards and or plus. But that's just me. But typically, it's 40, at least 44 cards, okay? I think that's a very popular number for oracle decks. Um, I'm not crazy when decks have less than 44. Like, for, for me, 44 cards is like the minimum for a deck. But I have some decks that have 36 cards and I don't use them. <laughs> okay, uh, this is technically the last one. Plus, I'll have a bonus that I'll show you. This is the magical spell cards, okay? So, if you're into witchcraft and into like a little astrology and things like that, highly recommend this one. The This, especially if you're into witchcraft, okay, or like things like that. The guidebook is really, really nice. Um... So you have like the a huge description. I mean, this is a big guidebook compared to the other ones I've shown you. It's really large. But uh, you have the whole description of each card. And then what I like about it is that you do usually have a little spell. I don't usually do them. But what I like about the spells is that there's like a little bit of a poem in there. And I love poetry. I love poems. And that's why I love this deck. I don't use the guidebook, but I do like reading this little poem here. And then there is a little poem on each card I'm going to show you. This is the back of the cards. These are pretty large cards, though. They're very tall. And they have five different backings. So these are all the different backs. I mean, it's pretty freaking cool. So I don't think there's a reason for it. It's just cool. So those are, I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. The only thing is they're hard to shuffle. That's my only complaint about this deck. Now, I love the colors. I love the art style. Here is the title of the card. So, good cheer and the little poem here. I like to use this to set my intentions, to manifest, to manifest certain things. You know, this is a really well-rounded deck. 
highly recommend for beginners. There's everything in here, and there's a lot of cards in here. There's, um, let's see how many cards. Oh, those, there's 45 cards. I thought there was more. So, for example, when I go on road trips or when I travel or whatever, I like to set this out in my table with a few crystals, and it helps me set the intention that I will have safe travels. And I like to repeat this three times. Make sure that I'm safe on my travels. What is this? So that's kind of what I like to do. This is just uh, one idea of what to do with these cards, but I love them. They're really nice. Healing, confidence, justice. Let's pull a card here. So, let's see what we got. What card do we have here? New beginnings! Let this magic in my spell clear the space in which I dwell. Nice. I mean, how beautiful is that? <laughs> so, that is the magical spell cards that I recommend. And then the bonus one that I recommend if you feel like it. But I feel like this deck would be really good for beginners because there is so much, so much symbolism in here. These are basically tea leaves, my tea leaf deck. And uh, the box is like yellow and red. I don't have it here though. But the only reason I'm hesitating to put this for beginners is because there's a lot of cards and there's a lot of symbols. So it could be a little bit overwhelming. But if you're up for a little bit of a challenge, these cards are amazing because it will help you learn different types of symbols so when you go read your tarot when you read your oracle decks you're gonna it, it helps you understand oh the bouquet okay this could be like compliments from an admirer type thing you know so you also have the months the kangaroo with uh, a little bit of a phrase here now the only thing about this deck is that sometimes the the little phrase here is a little limiting um so i would encourage you to think outside the box with this one the guidebook is not great as well because there is 200 cards, but for basics, okay? Four-leaf clover, great, good fortune. That's really basic, you know? And, uh, you know, the gong, an exciting event. There's people in this deck. So this is really good for predictions. Really good, highly, highly recommend for predictions. See a turkey. Someone is behaving stupidly. So next time you see a turkey, you might think, oh, this, you might be dealing with someone who's behaving stupid, you know? A bow so it really helps to associate certain meanings to certain symbols and then you could really use this knowledge in any deck after that so that's why i like the tea leaves you know but um i don't know if this this could be a really good beginner deck you know if you're into this type of thing here you know a tent temporary situation i love that that's amazing because when you're done you pick up and you go so there's a lot to digest in this deck, but it's very straightforward. You have the picture of the thing and let's say a little phrase. And that's why I would recommend this deck for beginners. This is really good for predictions. I swear to God, guys, this is for me highly, highly um, precise. Because <laughs> there's so much. It's just a little hard to shuffle, but it does come with a bag when you buy the deck. The, the deck says that, you know, you put all these cards in like a mesh bag and then you pull cards out of. That's not my personal way of doing cards, but, you know, to each his own. So that's another idea that you could use. So just to wrap up, we have the tea leaves here that I would recommend for oracle cards. Just put that back there. Then we have the magical spell cards. Really good for witchcraft, setting your intentions, also predictions, events, things like that. Um... Then we're going to do the, we have the archetype cards that I recommend. We have the star seed that I recommend. We have the sacred travelers. We have the angels and ancestors cards. And we also have the spirit animal cards. Let's make some room here. We have the Moonology cards that I highly recommend for beginners, for astrology lovers. A really good well-rounded deck is the Energy Oracle cards for predictions. For love readings, I recommend the Whispers of Love cards. Very cool. 
for self-reflection, personal growth, and stuff like that, I recommend the Power Surrender cards. Beautiful cards. I love these. I really do love these. I brought bring these everywhere. <laughs> um, and then we also have the Soul Journey lesson cards that I really like. And I believe that is all for my Oracle decks for beginners that I recommend the decks that I have in my collection. For Tarot, let's do a little wrap up. We have the Light Sears right here. Druid Craft, very good deck. We also have the Guardian Angel Messages. Um, Crystal Visions, the little fairy tale type deck. Ethereal Visions. <laughs> That is my second deck ever. Uh, what else? We have the um, Everyday Tarot, the little um, white, gold, and purple cards. And we have... My bad. We have any copy of the original Rider Waite Smith. This is what it looks like. This is the most well-known deck again. The most research, the most information. You see, this is a tower, so not everybody's going to like that. So it's, Some people get scared. We also have the death card that sometimes people are, you know, they don't like receiving this card. And that's why I would go with the Guardian Angel messages because they're all positive in that one. So that is the Rider Waite Smith. And then I also have... My actual favorite copy of the Rider Waite Smith is the After Tarot. This one right here, the After Tarot. I highly recommend this deck. I love it. And then my first deck ever, or what's left of it. <laughs> I love the backs on this one, guys. Freaking love it. I really want to get the. This is the Gilded Tarot. I want to get the newer version, the Gilded Royale Tarot, because this is nostalgic for me. And uh, this is my first deck. I did write on it, like I said earlier. It's really good for study. So my only, my only, my biggest recommendation, guys, pick something that speaks to you, okay? If you pick up a deck and you, the cards, most of the cards, maybe not every card is going to really trigger your intuition off the bat, but at least like 80% of the cards or 75% of the cards, you should be able to not even read anything about this deck and just have something to say based on the images, okay? That's my biggest tip here. Um, if you buy a deck like that, it's going to be so much easier to read and, uh, yeah. Also, ob obviously do research, um, read the guidebooks online. There's like countless tarot books out there for you guys to learn from. So, yeah. And also, I'm going to leave you on this note, okay, guys? Everybody has their own opinion about your tarot journey. Everybody's going to tell you, oh, no, they're, they're, they're all going to tell you their superstitions, their own techniques, and they're going to try to tell you how to read your cards, Okay. Guys, take this advice, but do whatever, what the fuck you want with it, okay? Read how you want to be reading. Shuffle how you want to shuffle. Choose the first deck that you want. People are going to tell you, no, you need to be gifted your first deck. That's fucking bullshit. I bought all of these decks. I've never been gifted a deck in my life. Um, so, yeah. Those are my <laughs> a little bit of a rant, but it's true, guys. You need to trust yourself on this. This is your practice, and... Every practice, everybody's practice is going to look a little different, okay? Based on your interest, on your knowledge, on how, why you use this, you know. So just trust yourself, guys. Go with it, okay? And also, um, if you let, let's just look at this card here, or let's take the fool here, for example. Let's do a little exercise, and let me know in the comments the first words that come to mind. You'll see that they're all different, okay? Everybody's going to say different things but the theme remains the same of the full card okay and the colors as well so trust yourself when you're reading don't compare yourselves to anyone else and do your own thing girl or guy because yeah if you're interested in this that means that you have like the natural abilities to read tarot so go for it girl or guy <laughs> um i think mostly women watch my channel though so yeah that's all i had for this video let me know in the comments what you thought which deck would you buy from this? What was your first tarot deck ever? I'm very curious. Please let me know in the comments. And uh, I just recently got the Rider Waite Smith. <laughs> just to tell you that you don't need specifically to start with the Rider Waite because if these images don't fucking, you know, resonate with you, choose another deck. There's so many decks on the market. These are all very affordable decks. They're all easily found. You could find this on Amazon, at your bookshop, at your esoteric store near you or crystal store, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's all I had. So I'll see you in the next one. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Bye, guys. <laughs>